for me it was very emotional. Um, you work in hockey, and the longer you're in this business, the better you can appreciate how hard it is to win a Stanley Cup. And you come to appreciate that most people leave the game without getting their name etched on the cup. So I wanted it so badly. At the same time, you're, when you're dreaming about winning the Stanley Cup, you expect your family to be around. You expect your loved ones to be there. And obviously, we couldn't uh, share in that experience with them in Edmonton. And even though it was an evening of, of pure joy when we won the Cup uh, in September of 2020, there's a little bit of mixture of, I wish my family was here. Uh, so to win it this year at Amelie Arena in front of all of our fans and all of our full-time staff were here because they were offered two comp tickets to every game in the final. And I know most of them were in the building because I saw a lot of them in the, the post-game celebrations. Um, that was awesome. Having the Vinick family here, nobody, no owner in sports deserves to have that moment more than Jeff does. Uh, so I was happy to see that. To have our families here, my wife, my two boys, my parents were here. We had such a blast in the post-game celebrations. It was so nice to, to share that moment with them. But also, all of our hockey ops staff that don't live in Tampa, um, were here, or at least they were all invited and most of them came. So our scouts from around the world, all of our development uh, people that live in various places, all of our Syracuse uh, crunch staff, uh, were all here in the building and they got to partake in the celebrations as they should because they're a big part of us winning this championship. So it kind of all came together to make for a really magical night and uh, uh, just something I'm so grateful for. Um, as for the team itself, um, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed watching them play during this playoff run. Uh, not only as a general manager of this organization, but as a hockey fan. Obviously such a talented group, but most importantly, so much collective heart. Um, all of the block shots, all of the hits given and taken, all of the punches <laughs> given and taken. All of the competing through injury, it, it was outstanding uh, and so inspiring to, to watch a, on, a, on a game in, game out basis. Um, Victor Hedman suffered a torn meniscus on a, in a game on March 30th. So he's been playing through that ever since. Uh, he's having a meniscectomy today. Expected uh, downtime is three to four weeks, so we're not concerned going forward. Um, Barclay Goodrow and Ryan McDonough played in the, in the playoffs with a broken hand. We had a number of players with some banged up shoulders, nothing of concern going forward. Uh, obviously, Alex Killorn uh, suffered a broken fibula in game one of the Stanley Cup final. Um, I saw the x-ray, it, it was broken in two very distinct pieces <laughs> uh, all the way through. Uh, blocked that shot, broke his leg on a Monday on a Thursday in the hopes of being able to come back and help us win the Stanley Cup, had a rod inserted in his fibula, um, was skating by Saturday. That's how you win the Stanley Cup. And, uh, and Kuch obviously, uh, <laughs> Coach obviously had, uh, sorry, part of this is I have a cold. Uh, part of it is I'm, I was inspired by the guys. Um, Coach uh, obviously suffered a, I think you know by now, a, a non-displaced rib fracture in uh, the series against the Islanders from a cross check. Uh, played uh, with a, f a flag jacket from that point on and also had a nerve block uh, injection before the day before every game from that point on. So uh, it makes his his performance during these playoffs, both before the uh, the uh, the injury and, and post broken rib, all the more impressive. Uh, he's uh, he he's a tough hockey player. He's an incredible hockey player, and uh, all of us in both nation are, are are happy that he's our coach. So uh, couldn't be happier for him, and he seemed really happy that we won as well. Uh, there's, there isn't a more, more determined player out there than, than Nikita Kucherov. Um, I 
I think that's it for, for the injuries. I would like to uh, have a special shout out to uh, Dr. Chuck Nally. Uh, Chuck is the doctor that performed the nerve blocks uh, on Cooch before, the day before every game, uh, which in and of itself I'm grateful for. But it's all the more special because uh, at a certain point his family was in, uh, on vacation out of state and, uh, and on three occasions he flew back to Tampa to inject Cooch and then went back and rejoined his family again uh, to, to partake in, in the family vacation. So big shout out to Chuck. Uh, so grateful for his dedication to, to our success and, and, and to Cooch's care. Uh, another special shout out to uh, our director of sports medicine, uh, Tom Mulligan. Uh, Tom has been with us for a long, long time. I was actually here before I got here. Um, the last year has been incredibly demanding on him uh, because of all the COVID protocols and uh, all the testing and he oversaw all of that and summarized the protocols for us and uh, executed the, the plans to make sure that uh, he kept all of us safe and uh, obviously uh, big props to our players and our coaches and our sports staff for being disciplined and, and determined and uh, helping us prevent having a, a COVID outbreak. Uh, but in particular, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge uh, all the hard work that uh, Tom uh, did in the last year, year and a half. Uh, he is, he's, earned, <laughs> he's earned a vacation and some family time because I know he hasn't had a lot uh, in the last 18 months. Um, going forward, um, I think it's pretty, uh, it's pretty easy for all of us to kind of take this team's success for granted at this point. Uh, in the last seven years, the team has reached the Stanley Cup uh, Conference Finals five times, um, won three. The two times we didn't win, we went to Game 7 and lost to the eventual Stanley Cup winner. Went to three Stanley Cup Finals and now just won back-to-back -back championships. It's a pretty amazing run that we've been on so far. Uh, and it's the result of the hard work of a lot of people. Uh, the business side, our staff here are amazing and they kill it, especially under very difficult circumstances in the last year and a half or so. Our community outreach people do so much in the community uh, to, to make sure that we are a, a good corporate citizen and a community leader. Um, obviously our players and our coaches are determined and, and they bring it every day. Um, but our analytics department, our scouts, our player development people, everyone done, has done so much great work to build up this organization so that we could have this success. Uh, so I'm really happy for all of us uh, that you know, we got rewarded with, with these back-to-back -back championships. And, and in particular, we got to celebrate together this time uh, the way it should be. Um, going forward, I expect us to remain a Stanley Cup contender. Like if we want to win another championship, if we want to win a championship, you first, uh, first of all, you have to be a Stanley Cup contender. And, and we've been that probably since 2013-14. And uh, if I look at our roster right now, like we have elite players at all of the key positions and they're either in their prime or just entering their prime. Uh, so I have a lot of reasons to believe that we're going to remain a Stanley Cup contender and hopefully the stars align uh, again for us just like they did the past two years and we can go on another magical run and, and bring back the cup one more time. Um, the biggest challenge to us being able to do that obviously is the salary cap right now. Uh, we have a Stanley Cup winning roster and <laughs> our challenge to maintaining that roster uh, is the salary cap. So we're going to have to get creative. Um, examples of how we've managed uh, to the cap and try to optimize the space we have over the last two years are when we traded Ryan Callahan to Ottawa for uh, Mike Condon and then you know, we assigned Mike Condon to the minors and essentially buried his contract in the minors and, and took most of, of that cap saving uh, off our books and we could reinvest it in the team. And then we traded for uh, Barclay Goodrow and Blake Coleman who were two players who uh, greatly outperformed the cap hit they were taking, the cap space they were, they were assuming under our cap. Um, prior, to this off prior to this past season, we traded two players we could no longer afford, uh, 
Braden Colbert and Cedric Paquette to Ottawa, gave Ottawa a second round pick and took two, contract back, uh, two contracts back uh, of two players that were injured and, and could be assigned to the long-term injury exemption. Uh, and then at this year's deadline, we traded for David Savard uh, and had it set up in a way that Columbus and Detroit retained 75% of... Uh, of the cap space. So we're going to have to keep getting creative and, and finding ways to, to optimize the cap space so that we can keep as many of these, of these players as possible and try to keep this roster intact. But the reality is, as much as I would like to bring this team back exactly as is, and I would have faith that they're going to have a lot of success, um, the reality is that we won't be able to do that. Uh, mostly because of the cap, to a certain extent, because there's an expansion draft coming up. Um, Today, I can't tell you who uh, won't be coming back, which players won't be coming back, because I don't know uh, for sure. Uh, but I know that whoever won't be coming back, uh, I will miss having them on the team. So I will throw it out to questions. Julian, just to clarify uh, on the injuries, is there anyone who might not be ready for, for training camp? No, our, our, our longest uh, rehab time is um, Victor Hedman, and we're looking at three to four weeks. So everyone should, everyone's expected to be good to go. You mentioned guys that may or may not be back. What, how much of a priority, or I guess how confident are you that you can bring back Blake Coleman and Barkley? I don't know. Um, before I, I can even bring back some of our free, unrestricted free agents, you've named two, I need to clear up cap space. Uh, I need to clear up cap space just to keep the guys that are under contract. And now we're talking about maybe bringing in or keeping guys that aren't under contract and adding their contracts to our books. So uh, it, it's going to be challenging. Uh, the reality is that those two players have earned substantial raises. Uh, and I may or may not be in a position to uh, be the one that gives it to him. Do you expect things league-wide to be kind of slow until the expansion draft is over? I know everyone's working on trying to cut deals with Seattle. We're not any different. Um, so there's a lot of that work going on right now. Uh, the, the Seattle situation, it adds a nice wrinkle to our, to our challenge this offseason. Uh, will there be deals before that? I, I, I would think there might be. We may be one of those teams, maybe not. Uh, but I would expect that once we've passed the expansion draft, I think there will be um, a certain number of, of trades coming up over the course, or no, throughout the league, because uh, we we have our reasons why we need to make trades, and they're mostly cap related. But uh, other teams are, you know, they're trying to win the Stanley Cup as well. They're trying to improve their team, and they're looking for players, or maybe they have cap issues of their own. So there, there's a lot of chatter going on, as there usually is at this time of year. What did last year teach you in terms of the difficulty and the challenge of, of making deals to just shed the larger contract? I think last season was a one-off. Uh, there was so much uncertainty at that point. Were we going to be able to play? If we did play, were we going to be able to finish the season? So uh, what was the revenue situation going to be like? Uh, there, there was a lot of reasons why teams weren't as eager to acquire players last offseason. Uh, I think now we're in a better place league-wide. Uh, looking into the future, I expect that we're going to be up and running and, and back to normal by the fall. Uh, revenue should follow, um, and teams want to win. And we saw it at the trade deadline. Like teams make trade to try to improve their teams. And I, the sense I've gotten the last few days, being on, uh, spending a lot of time on the call uh, on the phone, is that there's there's an appetite to uh, there's an appetite to add players. Most te most teams are trying to you know improve their team as they should. Look at these past two cup runs. I, not that one's easier than the other, but is there one that sticks out to you in terms of like it was just a grind the whole way through versus the other? You know, we had all those overtimes the first the, the first uh, run, uh, and, and this time we had a two nothing lead in uh, three of the four series. They were a little bit they, so they were a little bit different. Uh, I think they were both just as hard. 
as a general manager watching the games, I think it was a little easier this time around. Uh, just because we had the lead most of the time, we didn't have those long overtimes where, at which point where it's really a coin flip as to who's going to win that game. And, it, and that win can flip a series. Uh, but they were both, I think from a physical standpoint, they were both incredibly demanding on our players. Julian, the last couple of years, a young guy comes in, he seems to really perform well, whether it's a guy like Ross Golden or Barry Belay during the regular season. Who are some of those young guys you're looking at in the offseason to put in the work to be ready to take a roster spot next year? I think we have, uh, you, you've mentioned a couple of young players, uh, Barry Boulay being one. Um, you know, Calfoot had a really good year for us, didn't play down the stretch, didn't play in the playoffs, but uh, I would expect him to take a step. Boris Kachuk, Taylor Radish, they're ready to fight for a roster spot. And the reality is you never know who's going to be able to step in, adapt, and strive. Uh, sometimes it's the players you would expect, and often it's not. Uh, a year ago, would we have expected Ross Colton to be the guy that would win the Stanley Cup winning goal? I don't know. The answer is no. Uh, but it was him. Uh, and who's going to be the next guy to do it? I can't tell you for sure, but those guys are the ones that are knocking at the door. Do you prefer to make a deal with Seattle to kind of dictate who they're going to take from your team? Um, I think if I got to choose, yeah. Uh, it, it all depends on what the, what's that going to cost me, right? Uh, so. I am having conversation with Seattle, as is everyone. Uh, maybe we will cut a deal. I think it's also very possible that we're going to present our list, they're going to pick a player, and that's how it goes. That's how it's set up. You have a number of players with no trade clauses, which complicates things for you. What is the likelihood that some of those players are going to be amenable to waiving clauses? Uh, I don't know. I haven't had any of those conversations as of yet. Um, you know, in determining which players are likely to not return, other than if Seattle just claims a player, but in trying to decide who we're going to keep, uh, we're going to be looking at who do we ex like the expected contribution to the team's success going forward. How hard are you to play against? Uh, what do you bring to our team on the ice, but also off the ice? What's your age? Uh, what's your contract status? Meaning cap hit, term, trade restrictions. Um, so we're looking at all those factors in making decisions. Uh, there isn't one that's overriding. Ultimately, we're trying to, trying to keep the strongest group possible so that we can hopefully get on another run and bring the, cap back, uh, bring the cup back again next year. In, in retrospect, you, know, you talk about how much these guys played through and how tough they were. You know, when you're evaluating players, like how, how do you evaluate that X factor of you know, guys who are going to play for you through injuries and it just grind you know, to, to win a Stanley Cup. I mean, is that scouting? Is that, like, how, how do you do that? I think a lot of it is scouting. Like, players show you over time and you get to know who, who can do it. And in fairness, most players will. Um, that's how they got to the NHL. It's really hard to play at the NHL level. Not only do you need to be skilled, but you need to be determined. You need to be tough. Um, and we won back-to-back -back Stanley Cup championships because we had rosters full of those guys. I had a number of phone calls overnight. The biggest question they had was not the future. How, the, how did the cup get hurt? It was dropped. Is that like, I, I didn't see it, uh, so it's secondhand. But I, my understanding is one of our players was you know, presenting it to our fans, showing it off, and dropped it. So it's out with an upper body injury for the next couple of days. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Nice having you back. Thank you. Thank you.